So I'm here in our Woofy Passive model that we have been building out as part of this video series, and we need to decide which part of the model we want to tackle next. We certainly have enough data in at this point um, for Woofy Passive to start to calculate some values for things like heating energy demand, cooling energy demand, etc. But they're not terribly representative of the actual project yet. I mean, they're close. They're certainly getting getting close, but we are still using an awful lot of default values for all sorts of different parts of the project. We, we also don't have any heating system built out, any cooling system built out, etc. So there's all sorts of things that we want to continue working on on our model here, and, and, and we can sort of choose to tackle just about any of them next. But I'm going to propose for this video that we take a look at the fresh air ventilation system and finish up our modeling of that piece of the, the, the puzzle here. So we've already talked about how we build out our interior spaces and how we assign some default fresh air ventilation to those um, right out of the box. So Honeybee is going to do some scheduling and some load assignment for us. Uh, and then we looked at how we build a uh, in this case, a Zender fresh air vent, dedicated fresh air ventilation system with an ERV. So we talked about how we, we build out the equipment there. But what we haven't really looked at are those default load values. And then, of course, the schedule of operation for that ventilation system as well. So let's take a look at how that works in Woofy Passive, and then we'll go back to our Rhino model and see how we set those those values. So as I said, I'm here in my uh, Woofy Passive model. So my, my same Woofy Passive model that we've been working on. Here's our little building here. And if I go to the Ventilation Rooms tab, there's a couple things that we can take a look at. So let's take a look at our Rooms Ventilation Worksheet, first of all. And of course, we've already uh, taken a look at this in some depth, where we have our whole list of all of our interior spaces. And each of those spaces has a utilization pattern assigned. And then notice over here that it also has supply and extract design air applied. So a load, a fresh air ventilation load, has already been applied to each of the spaces. Now, we didn't assign that. That was done automatically using some defaults. And we'll talk about what that, where, what that is and where those come from. So we have a load that's been assigned. And then right here, you can see we also have a schedule that's been assigned. Now, this uh, uh, sort of breakdown between load and schedule is going to be very common throughout Honeybee. So we're going to see that when we get into modeling in particular, non-residential projects in Honeybee, the um, sort of difference between load and schedule is going to be uh, quite clear. So as we as we move through things like occupancy, lighting, fresh air ventilation, um, set points, we're always going to have both a load and a schedule. So all of those things have both a load and a schedule. Now, loads and schedules are a little bit more mixed up in the passive house modeling. There's not quite a clear division between those things, and there's not a consistent nomenclature that's used for those things. Um, but there are still loads, and there are still schedules present in Woofy Passive. It's just that they're not quite as clearly defined. So we're going to have to do a little bit of translation back and forth between Honeybee and Woofy Passive. But we do see here that we have some loads. So over in these columns here, we have our loads applied. And then we have what we might, in Honeybee terms, call our schedule. But in Wolfie Passive terms, they call it the utilization pattern. So OK, fine, utilization pattern. Well, I see where the loads are entered. So the loads just get entered here. So I could just enter whatever value I want for the load. But where does this schedule get defined? And the schedule gets defined over here in the utilization pattern worksheet. And here, we're able to build out whatever number of schedules we want. Notice we have one here coming in called generic office schedule. And then in this lower portion here, we're able to enter a, a sort of four-part breakdown of the ventilation airflows. So we see on the right-hand side here, fraction of design airflow, and then a daily operation schedule in hours. So this is kind of a peculiar way to enter these values, but OK, this is a schedule. What we're looking at here is a schedule of operation. At what speed is the fresh air ventilation going to be provided? And then what times of day, or for how many hours per day, will the fresh air be supplied at that rate? So what is the sort of daily operation, I think, is pretty straightforward. It's just number of hours per day. But what about this fraction of design airflow, this guy over here? What is this referring to? Well, if we go back to our room's ventilation for just a second, here, notice that this is our design volume flow rate. So these loads are at, you could think of it as 100% fan speed. 
or at what, what they call here design flow rate. <clears throat> so this is the sort of maximum uh, rate that our fresh air ventilation can be supplied at. But uh, of course, our system is not going to be operating at that flow rate all the time. In fact, perhaps most of the time, our system is going to be operating at some lower percentage of that theoretical maximum. So if this is 100% fan speed, if this is the, the, the volume flow rate at 100% fan speed, well, we're not going to run the ERV at 100% fan speed all the time. Maybe we're going to run it at you know 75% speed for most of the day. And that's what we're seeing over here in our utilization pattern. So for instance, we're running it at five hours a day at 100% speed and then two hours a day at 100% speed. So that, that's a little weird. This schedule is a little weird. Remember, this is just a default schedule. So it's it's just a, a default schedule that's uh, uh, being entered for us. But of course, we want to be able to configure this in quite a bit more detail. We want to be able to say, oh, well, at one hour a day, we're going to run the system at boost. And then 23 hours a day, we're going to run the system at 75% span speed, something like that. All right, so let's go back to Rhino and let's see how we're going to configure all this information back in our Rhino scene. So I'm going to switch back to Rhino here and I'm back in my little model here. So we still have the same geometry here and we'll go back to our grasshopper scene. And of course, this is the same grasshopper scene we've been working in. Um, in our last video together, we modeled out the appliances and the occupancy here. So these two guys in the middle, of course, we have our mechanical systems, our spaces all coming in. All right, so what should we do first? Should we set our fan, should we set our schedule or should we set our flow rates? Um, maybe let's set up our schedule. The schedule is um, uh, relatively straightforward. So let's take a look at how we set up a passive house style fresh air ventilation schedule. So the, it's relatively easy. What we want to do here is come to our Honeybee pH worksheet. And we have a, a dedicated component here um, for honeybee pH ventilation schedules. So what this component is going to do is it's going to build a honeybee style hourly ventilation schedule, but it's going to build it in a way that interfaces nicely with Woofy Passive, where we don't have hourly schedules. We have instead this four part schedule where we're able to enter four different time periods and four different schedule uh, or four different fan speeds. So all right, so I've got this new component here, this uh, vent honeybee ventilation schedule. So let me go ahead and drop that onto my canvas. I'm going to come over here to my spaces section, and maybe let's open up a new um, sort of piece of the, the canvas here after our spaces. And um, I'll make a new division, and we will uh, we'll give this a, a heading here as well. So we'll call this uh, vent schedule and now this is going to be this we're going to build here the schedule for the fresh air ventilation the fresh air ventilation just the fresh air ventilation we have not i guess i should keep this uh, capitals we have not yet gotten into um you know any heating systems or cooling systems we're here still just talking about fresh air ventilation so the erv system all right so let's take a look at this component so this component is going to create a ventilation schedule so it's going to create a, a honeybee style ventilation schedule it's going to take in a bunch of information. So an operating days per week, an operating weeks per year, an, something called an operation period high, an operation period standard, basic and minimum. These operation periods are the ones that we want to concern ourselves with. If we go back to our Woofy Passive for a second, remember our operation periods. So the operation periods high, standard, basic and minimum are going to correspond to these inputs right here. So we need to build this data back in our Rhino scene. So let me switch back to Rhino. So how are we going to do that? Let's build our schedule first. So I'm going to supply a, a, an operation period for high speed and an operation period for standard speed. Maybe we'll give this a, a name as well. We'll call this Ed's Vent Schedule. So this will be my custom vent schedule, uh, which is going to operate on FIAS lines. Now, how do we build these operation periods? What the heck are these operation period things? Uh, well, up here, right next to the ventilation schedule, we have another component which is which allows us to create operation periods. So these operation periods are basically just two pieces of data, a hours per day, and then an operating fraction. So this is, uh, we can we can build this out. Uh, go back to our Wi-Fi passive for a second using these two values. So an operation period hours per day, and then a fractional speed. Okay, so come back here and let's do our high let's do our high speed first. So let's say we're going to be operating at 100% fan speed. 
So we'll, we'll enter a 1. So the operating fraction is 100%. And how many hours a day do we want to run it at 100% for? Let's just say, let's keep it easy. Let's just say 1 hour. Right, maybe one hour a day you're going to have the ERV in boost mode as a, com a combination of showers and cooking and whatever else. Right, so maybe in one hour a day we're going to we're going to run our system in boost mode. So I'm going to take this operating period and I'm going to say this is my high operating period. Now this component still isn't happy. See, it's still growing, glowing orange, and that's because we've only um, set up a ventilation schedule for one hour of the day. What about the other 23 hours of the day? We'll come back up here and we'll grab another operation period and we'll build a second operation period. And this operation period is going to run for the other 23 hours a day. So the other 23 hours a day. And what speed do we want to run our ERV at the other 23 hours a day? Uh, well, it's up to you. This is the design. But let's say that we want to run it at 75% fifth hand speed. So let's say 75%. And let's say that this operating period goes to standard. You can see this is now happy because we have now set up the uh, schedule for all 24 hours of the, of the typical day. And so we now have our new schedule. So you can see if we take a look here, we've got our new schedule. Uh, it's going to run 52 weeks a year, seven days a week. And it's going to be running at 75%. Uh, uh, excuse me, for 23 hours a day and then 100% for one hour a day. So here's our new schedule. Now, what do we do with this schedule? How do we apply this schedule to my honeybee rooms? Well, this is just a honeybee schedule. So this is just a honeybee ventilation schedule. So we're just going to use normal honeybee energy tools to do that. So instead of my honeybee energy, my honeybee pH tab, I'm going to come over here to honeybee energy. I can come into schedules and I can go to apply room schedule. So exactly the same way that we would manage any other schedule in Honeybee. And this component here is going to take in some rooms. So I'll give it the Honeybee rooms. So I've got my Honeybee rooms that are coming out here. We'll take the Honeybee rooms. And then what it's looking for is a type of schedule. So it can accept any different type of schedule. In our particular case, we have a ventilation schedule. So I'll just take ventilation schedule and I'll connect it to ventilation schedule. So I'm, I'm taking these rooms and I'm resetting the ventilation schedule. And now I have modified honeybee rooms. And these modified honeybee rooms can then be passed along to the next link in the chain. And let's maybe do a little bit of reorganizing here just to kind of keep things nice and tidy. I don't like it when all the lines cross over everything. And just to be consistent, make sure we preview off. And there we go. So there's our ventilation schedule. So we've now, we've now created and applied this new ventilation schedule to our honeybee rooms. Let's take a look at what that looks like to do that. I'll come over to the end here. And as always, I will just go ahead and write out my woofy passive file. And then I'll shift back to woofy passive. And so notice what our schedule looks like right now. So we've got you know, five, 100%, blah, blah, blah. Come to file, say open, navigate to my desktop. I'll choose the newest timestamp. And now if we go to our ventilation rooms, we come down here, notice that I now have uh, my maximum uh, running one hour a day at 100% fan speed, and then my standard running 23 hours a day at 75% fan speed. So this schedule, Ed's Vent Schedule, is now being applied as the schedule for all of the spaces within the Honeybee rooms that I applied the schedule to. So this schedule is now being used to set the average ventilation flow rates of our building. Remember, the, see, notice here the loads haven't changed. We have not yet changed the loads. We've only changed the schedule of operation. So next, let's take a look at these loads. How are we going to set up these loads? Because obviously, the closet doesn't need you know one CFM. The mechanical room doesn't need three CFM, etc. Right? This is not. These are not correct loads. Let's talk about where these loads come from and how we set these up. We'll finish up our fresh air ventilation uh, uh, mechanical configuration. So we'll come back to Rhino, and let's come back to our spaces. And we skipped over this, so I'm back in my spaces. Remember, we built our spaces, and then we applied the spaces to the different rooms. And we skipped over this back when we built spaces, but notice here that there's an input for space passive house ventilation flow rates. So we have the ability to take in at the time of construction, or at the time of creation, some fresh air ventilation flow rates, some loads. So how much volume flow will the different spaces experience? 
Remember what we have here is a list of all of our various spaces. So we've got our list of all of our spaces. And each one of these spaces should have a, a designated volume flow, a fresh air volume flow. Now some of them will have zero. So you know, closets, um, closets, mechanical rooms, those will probably have zero CFM of, of fresh air flow, but others will have some sort of specified volume flow. It looks like I did a nice mixture of capital and lowercase. Sorry about that for confusion. Um, in any event, what we would like to do is go through and say, oh, you're a bedroom, you get 15 CFM. Oh, you're a kitchen, you get 30 CFM of extract or 40 CFM of extract, you know, what, whatever it is, whatever our design is. So how are we going to set that up? How are we going to input these values here into our space uh, of flow rates? Well, we can't it just input numbers directly. So what we have to do is use another component to build up these space flow rates. So we're going to build up a series of flow rates, one for each space, and then we're going to pass those in to our constructor here. So we can do that by coming up to our Honeybee pH. And if we come over to our Spaces tab, Notice that there's a whole component here uh, which is going to be used to create these passive house flow rates. So we haven't used this component yet, but I'll grab one of these and drop it onto the canvas here. And this component is going to be used to set up and create a bunch of flow rates that can then get input here into our space creator. Now, there's all sorts of ways that we can get this data. So, so you know, this is just looking for some CFM of data. So a supply error, an extract error, a transfer error. It's going to combine them together and create them. We can then pass them along. So where does this data come from? Well, this is Grasshopper, so you can, you know, uh, bring data in from Excel or CSV files. You could, uh, you know, set it up in Rhino. There's all sorts of different ways that you could get the data in. For our purposes here, just to keep things super simple, let's just build the data directly in Grasshopper. So I'm just going to build a list of flow rates. So I'm going to make a new panel and I'm going to make it a, I'm going to right click and say multi-line data and this is going to be CFM of supply air. So C supply. So we'll do, we'll set up the CFM of supply and then we will also set up the CFM of extract and let's just make, let's just list them out here. Again, we could do this in Excel, we could do this in a CSV, it's all sorts of ways we could do it, but let's just, let's just do it easily here. So what I want to do is give a number for each of these. So each one of these I want to give a number to. So let me just do that. I'm just going to go through and list out all my uh, uh, different spaces here. So open to below, you're going to get zero CFM. Bedroom, you're going to get 20 CFM. Uh, closet, you're going to get zero CFM. Landing, you'll get zero bathroom you'll get zero, bedroom you'll get 20, uh, living room I don't know you'll get 20, den you'll get 20, kitchen you'll get zero, bathroom you'll get zero, closet you'll get zero, mechanical you'll get zero, entry you'll get zero, closet you'll get zero. Now let's see if I lined all that up correctly. So we've got a list of 13 items, a list of 13 items. So notice here bedroom 20, uh, bedroom 20, living room 20, den 20. Right, so everything looks like it's lined up properly here. So let's do the same thing with our ex extract. So let me move these around. Um, again, this would probably be a lot easier in Excel, but um, you know, just to keep it super simple here, we'll just build it directly in Grasshopper. Open to below, you'll get zero CFM. Bedroom, you'll get zero. Closet, zero. Landing, zero. Bathroom, let's say that you'll get uh, 25 CFM. Bedroom gets zero. Living room gets zero, den gets zero, kitchen gets um, 35 CFM of extract, bathroom gets 25 CFM of extract, zero for the closet. Do we want any from the mechanical? Let's just say zero for now and see where that puts us. We might want to add some in just to balance our system, um, but uh, you know we'll, we'll see. Let's let's uh, do the do the math, and we can check that quickly by just doing. We can just use a mass addition very quickly to see what our total is and see if we're see if we're going to be balanced. So I just used a mass addition there so we can just check. So we've got CFM. This is CFM. So 85 and let me just do a copy paste and we'll feed this data in. Okay, so it looks like we've got a total of 85 CFM of extract, but only 80 CFM of supply. So maybe let's give a little bit more air somewhere. So maybe the living room, maybe the living room will get 25 CFM. There we go. So now we're balanced. 85, 85. Okay, so that's pretty good. All right, so what are we going to do with this data now? So we've created the data. Now how do we put the data together? 
So let me just um, kind of uh, shrink these up, kind of manage things a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the supply, I'm going to take the supply data, and I'm going to feed it into this V supply. And I'm going to take the extract, and I'm going to feed it in to this V extract. So I'm supplying 13 values to the supply and 13 values to the extract. What's that going to do? This, pro this component is going to run 13 times, and it's going to build a whole bunch of space flow rates. So space, passive house, ventilation, flow rates. So it's going to build those and input those there. And notice that we're getting a bunch of zeros, some 25s, etc., etc. Right. So it's all coming in in the same order that we supplied it here. And because it's in the same order that our rooms are coming in as, we can then take these space flow rates and simply feed them in to our space flow rate here on our space constructor. Now, not quite. We do want to uh, keep things tidy. So one of the things I do need to do here is I need to graft, excuse me, I need to graft this data. So remember how over here we're bringing in data trees. I want to do the same thing. I want to graph this data. So I'm going to graph the data and then pass it in here. So I'm getting the same number. So I've got thir a 13 or a 14 branch data tree. Just like here, I've got a 14 branch data tree. Right. So I've got everything aligned on the right uh, um, branches. So I grafted the data. And now all of our spaces are getting a bunch of information. They're getting a bunch of data flowing through. Now we won't see that. So let's, um, let's go ahead and write this out to go over here to the right. And we'll write this out to our Woofy file. And let's see what we got in Woofy. So I wrote that out. I will go to Woofy. I will say open. And I will go to my desktop. Go here. Say yes. And let's see if our load data came through. We know our schedule worked. Our load data came through. What happened? 74,000 CFM? 42,000 CFM? Uh oh. I mean, we got our zeros where we wanted zeros. You know, the closet is getting zero CFM of load. But what happened here? What are these other values? Why did this go all wonky? Well, it's a, it's a simple fix. Um, if we come back to Rhino, let's go back to our load here. The answer is actually right here in the preview. Uh, notice here, space ventilation flow rates has a volume supply of 20 cubic meters per second. Oh, right. All of the Honeybee tools, the Energy Plus tools, are all going to be working in SI units. And those, the Energy Plus, in particular, is going to be managing flow rates for ventilation systems in meters cubed per second, rather than CFM, cubic feet per minute. So we have a unit mismatch. We didn't mean to enter 20 cubic meters per second. We actually want to convert that over uh, from CFM. Now, this component is quite straightforward. We can actually do that quite easily by just saying this is a CFM value. So we don't have to do anything special here. We just say CFM, CFM. And so long as we tell it what units we're inputting, notice that this component will do all the conversions uh, um, uh, uh, co oh, correctly. So instead of 20 cubic meters per second, we now have 0 0.0094 cubic meters per second, which I guess is the conversion. So these components, these passive files components, are designed to take in inputs in whatever units you want. You just have to say what unit you're inputting. If you hover your mouse over the tooltip here, you'll notice that the tooltip says um, you know, it's, it's expecting data in cubic meters per second but you don't have to supply it data in cubic meters per second. You can supply it data whatever you want in whatever unit you want, as so long as you just say what you're doing. Use your words. So we'll do the same thing here. We'll just say these are CFM values, not uh, cubic meter val per hour values or cubic meter per second values. And so now notice that we're getting much different values over here for all of our inputs, so these uh, kind of decimal values. All right, so let's see if that worked any better. So let's see. Let me go back and let's reprint or rewrite our Woofy file out to our hard drive. Come back here. We will go to open. We will navigate to the desktop. Come here, say open, say yes. And let's take a look. Fingers crossed. There we go. A little bit of rounding error uh, between SI and IP units, but you know, 
19.9999999 is uh, pretty is close enough to 20 in my book um, and so there we go so now all of our CFM values are coming through correctly as designated so you know the bedroom has 20 CFM of supply bedroom has 25 CFM of supply the den has 20 CFM of supply the bathroom has 25 CFM of supply so we've now set the loads for our fresh air ventilation system and if we go back to our utilization pattern we've also set up our schedule and so now if we were to go and calculate our our total results again pull this up we'll be getting some different values because our fresh air ventilation system is going to be working at a different rate with a different total air change let's uh, check that actually come back to our uh, ventilation over here on the bottom right we have our total average air change rate 0.37 so that's pretty good right? we, we want that number to be somewhere between 0 0.3 0 0.35 and maybe 0.6 or 0.7 on the high end right? that would be the sort of target if we're much higher than that we might be at risk of over dry air in the winter time or over humid air in the summertime if we're lower than that we could have humidity trouble on the other side uh, over humid air in the winter time you know not enough ventilation so we kind of want to be somewhere between 0.3 or 0.35 and maybe 0.6 or 0.7 ACH um, uh, for a total annual average air change for our building fr from the ventilation system so this is pretty good 0.35 that's pretty close 85 cfm of design flow an average flow of 64 cfm Alrighty. So our system is now uh, mostly operational. So we've built out all of our fresh air ventilation system at this point. We built all of our spaces. We assigned loads and schedules to each of those spaces. And we configured the mechanical equipment related to fresh air ventilation as well. So for the most part, our fresh air ventilation system is done at this point. We've now built out all the pieces here. Of course, we can always go back and edit any of that, revise any of that, change the schedule, change the loads at any point. Uh, and all of that would, of course, flow through. So I think we will uh, come to a close here uh, with our fresh air ventilation system. Um, and when we come back, we'll uh, jump into the next piece.